Hey guys, I'm Richard Holdner and welcome to the channel. So how do you make your LS motor even better? Easy. Just make it bigger. In this video, we're going to take a look at the buildup and dyno test of three different LS stroker applications. We're going to start off with the smallest is a 408 stroker utilizing a factory six liter block and four inch stroke. Then we're going to step up to 468 cubic inches utilizing a sleeved factory aluminum block. Then we're going to finish off with a massive 495 inch stroker combination using a tall deck RHS block. We'll get things started on our three stroker buildups with the smallest one, which is a 408. It's a very common displacement. We started off with a six liter iron truck block and then installed a stroker assembly that included a four inch forged steel stroker crank, six 125 inch forged connecting rods, and a set of forged dish pistons. So that produced 408 cubic inches when you combine the four inch stroke with the 4030 over bore. This combination was also equipped with a set of Airflow Research 245 cathedral port heads cnc ported so those worked very well we had stock rockers hardened push rods inch and three quarter headers a fast lsxrt intake manifold and 102 millimeter throttle body and it was all run with the holly hp management system we also ran uh, some fairly good sized camshafts in this thing so the first of which came from crane and it was a part number 1449511 that camshaft offered 600 lift a 240, 246 degree duration split and 114 degree lobe separation angle. And what I wanted to show you was, we ran a variety of different camshafts in this, but what I want to show you is we ran a number of camshafts that were very similar in specs from different manufacturers and not surprisingly, they all do the same thing. So if you have cams of similar specs, what they're going to do is make similar power, even if they came from different guys, no matter what they're promising you. So I wanted to show you that. So equipped with this crane camshaft, the combination produced 625 horsepower, 576 foot-pounds of torque. And if you're curious and want to know how much of a gain that camshaft is over a stock one, you can take a look at those numbers right there. Equipped with a stock cam, the stock LM7 cam or early 6 liter cam, this combination only produced 450 horsepower and 522 foot-pounds of torque. So if you ever want to show somebody how much a camshaft is worth, this is the example that I always use. Look, if you have everything else, and you run a stock camshaft and then you put a camshaft in it, you can pick up, you know, what's that, 150 or 175 horsepower, something like it's an awful lot. But what I want to show you here are two other camshafts that we ran. One of them is a rec port camshaft and the other one is a cathedral port camshaft because as I've shown you many times, the engine doesn't really care about that. So what we have are two comp cams. Uh, one of the cams was, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the specs on those. So the Cathedral Port Cam was a 624 lift, a 239-247 degree duration split, and 114 degree lobe separation angle. And then the Rec Port Cam was a 239, uh, 624 lift, a 239-255 degree duration split, so much more exhaust duration, and 114 degree lobe separation angle. And they were all very close in their peak power numbers. We're talking 621. 623 and 625 for all of them. The cathedral port cam seemed to be down just a little bit down here in the, you know, 53 to 61 or two, three. Uh, but you can see, look, if you look at the curves though, unless I showed you the difference between all of these, you, you really wouldn't know that there's a difference. I mean, the curves are identical and, and differ only by two or three horsepower everywhere. The rec port cam is down a little bit down low, um, down in the sub 3000 RPM range. Did a little bit better on the top than the cathedral port cam, but the crane cam and then the two comp cams basically produce the same power curve on this 408. So now let's step up to 468 inches. Our next combination was an even larger displacement stroker motor and required sleeving a factory aluminum block. I thought that this was a factory LS6 block, although the notes say that it was an LS1. I'm pretty sure that it was a factory LS6 block. So we did um, dart and sleeves in it, which allowed us to do two things, basically. We could go much larger on the bore size. We went out to 4185, and the sleeve length provided with the dart and sleeves also allowed us to run a much longer stroke without fear of the piston coming out of the bottom of the cylinder bore, basically. So this combination resulted in 468 cubic inches. It was a 4185 bore, and a 4250 stroke. We use um, Weissco and K1 components in this. 
Uh, they provided the stroker assembly, but including the 4250 stroke crank, 6125 rods, and our custom pistons that were 4185 bore. Uh, we also installed a healthy, but it was a off the shelf comp cam, you know, kind of low on the <laughs> low to the bottom of the page, basically on their hydraulic roller offerings. It was 624 lift a 255 271 degree duration split and 112 degree lobe separation angle although we stepped up that um lift to 660 because we installed um ls7 1.8 rockers this particular combination was fit with a set of mast cnc ported ls3 heads that would accept the um the ls7 rocker position so that worked out really well and we started off with a set of fast or a fast ls3 intake manifold and 102 millimeter throttle body the fast intake was off the shelf it was not ported in any way we also ran inch and seven eighths um american racing headers and obviously adjusted the timing and air fuel and all that with the um the holly hp management system and it worked well these were mast ls3 big bore heads and run with the fast intake manifold and we also ran this with a single plane so i'll be showing you that in just a second run with the fast manifold this stroker combination and it was over 12 to 1 i think it was 12 and a quarter produced 731 horsepower and 665 foot pounds of torque but here's what happened when we installed a carbureted intake manifold a single plane this upgrade was to the mast uh, split CNC ported single plane intake manifold in this particular one. I think that they offered it both ways, but this one had a 4500 dominator style flange on it. So it was a very big high flowing intake manifold. And we see that it made quite a bit more power than the EFI combination. So run with the single plane intake and 4500 dominator carburetor. Yeah, this was run with a carburetor. This thing produced 761 horsepower, although peak torque was down with the single plane to a peak of 645 foot-pounds of torque. So still doing pretty good in the torque department, but if you notice, and it's interesting that the Fast LS3 intake manifold obviously was not designed by the guys from Fast to run on this displacement motor, and yet it did fairly well. It, it did make quite a bit less peak power than the single plane, but we always expect that even on a factory size uh, 6.2 liter LS3. If you look at the LS3 intake testing that I did, a, a short runner or a single plane manifold is, can make more power at the top on the big end, but will make less power with the long runner stuff. And we saw this even on this big displacement motor, the crossover was at 5,900 RPM. So below that, the long runner fast basically made more power and torque and, and, and by as much as uh, we were looking at 578 versus 616 foot pounds down there. So what that, that's about 40 foot pounds or so but it picked up a lot on the big end this is typically what we see in a single plane versus a long runner intake manifold so it depends on where you want your power so now that we've taken a look at the 468 stroker let's step things up to a 495. Our final stroker was the largest of the three, displacing a massive 495 cubic inches, thanks to a combination of a 4185 bore and a very large 4.5 inch stroker crank. Now this was made possible by the use of an aluminum tall deck RHS block, and that's what allowed us to run so much stroke in this thing compared to the smaller 408 and 468. So we had the RHS aluminum tall deck block, and then we fit that with a combination of Wisco K1 and Lenati stroker. So Lenati supplied the billet stroker crankshaft, which which was 4.5 inch stroke. We had a set of 6300 um, K1 rods and then a set of flat top Wisco forged pistons. We combined that with, and, and the pistons were a 4185 bore, which the RHS allowed us to do. In fact, you could go all the way out to 4200, I think, but we wanted to keep some bore there in case we wanted to do overbore later on to be able to clean this thing up after we had run this thing a bunch. So we also uh, installed a healthy comp camshaft in it. It was a hydraulic roller, and comp also supplied the necessary link bar hydraulic roller lifters for this combination. So the camshaft 
uh, was spec at a 624 lift, but we stepped that up to a 660 lift again with the LS7 heads because we could utilize the 1.8 ratio LS7 rockers. So a 660 lift, a 259-275 degree duration split, and 115 degree lobe separation angle. Basically, I think it was the biggest off-the-shelf cam that Comp had in their, or hydraulic cam, that they had available in their catalog back in the time. Um, we also topped this thing with a set of mast CNC ported black label LS7 heads. That Those featured a 2200 intake valve and a 161 exhaust valve. They had 70 cc chambers, as I said, fully CNC ported in the intake, exhaust, and combustion chambers. These things flowed 395 CFM, so enough to support some fairly big power numbers. We topped that off with the mass, uh, you know, split CNC 4500 Dominator flange single plane intake manifold, and we ran it with a uh, Holly Ultra XP Dominator, um, a 1050 on this combination. Uh, we ran it obviously with a uh, um, uh, MSD controller, ignition controller, and dialed in the timing and, and the jetting with the carburetors to make sure that everything ran right. And as we see here, this thing made some fairly serious power with these mass black label heads. Equipped with those heads and that camshaft, the high compression, large displacement, this thing uh, displaced 495 cubic inches and made lots of horsepower and torque. It produced 810 horsepower at just 6,600 RPM and produced 600 or 726 foot pounds of torque. So it had the most horsepower and torque of any of the stroker combinations that we did by, by a pretty fair bit. And so it just goes to show you when you combine lots of displacement <laughs> and free flowing heads and the good intake manifold, and the result obviously is a combination that makes both lots of horsepower and lots of torque. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what do we learn from this little adventure running our three different stroker LS combinations where we learn the following thing. If you go big, you can make really big power. We started off with our 408 stroker using a normal six liter block and then boring that over, combining that with a four inch stroke and we made really good power. When you top that with the right cylinder heads and camshaft and intake, you have that kind of displacement. You can make really good power. In this case, we made over 600 horsepower. Then we stepped up to the 468 utilizing a factory aluminum block, but then adding dart and sleeves to that. That allowed us to do two things. We could go even bigger on the bore and even longer on the stroke without fear of having the piston come out of the cylinder at bottom dead center. That combined with, again, the right heads cam and intake, we got enough displacement, over 700 horsepower. And then our final step, a fairly expensive but still awesome tall deck RHS aluminum block that allowed us to stick a 4500 stroke and a 485 bore making 495 inches and if you want to go even more than that there's more available from that combination but again LS7 heads a big intake manifold lots of camshafts over 800 horsepower naturally aspirated on our stroker. I'm Richard Holder make sure to like share subscribe ring the bell do all that stuff more testing coming up.